1980s technology can't get better than that, huh? All right. Welcome, my friends, and ahoy to each and every one of you. Ahoy, scoundrels. Ahoy, skullduggers. Ahoy, buccaneers. Ahoy, swindlers. You're home, my friends. You're home. It's the Gaming Galleon. And I... Watch it. And I'm your host, Cap'n Raz. And I could not be happier or more proud to sit upon this deck every week and sail through the squalls and sail through the storms and sail through the time portals to get you to another adventure each and every week. And that's what we've been doing most of the afternoon. We've been uh, making our way through the soupy fog to a dark castle that each and every one of you have probably heard of called Hogwarts. That's right, my friends. We're going to be celebrating the world of Harry Potter today. And why? Well, just a few days ago, uh, believe it or not, it was the 20th anniversary of the first book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> And uh, I admittedly have never read it. Uh, I went the easy route um, listening to audio tapes. And I think I got about four books in, five books in, The Order of the Phoenix. And finally, uh, finally dropped off a little bit. I feel like this is off. Uh, can I recommend them? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Absolutely. Uh, if you're looking for some, uh, you know, a long franchise to get wrapped up in, uh, you know, a little bit of heroism, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of adventure. Uh, yeah, I d and, and you're into reading. Uh, I would, yeah, I totally suggest them. Uh, the audiobooks also quite good. Uh, I may not have gotten through all of them, but I think that's just me. I think for the most part, uh, most people would get wrapped up in the... The entire saga but how does this play into uh you know our ship here well harry potter you know may very be very big into books it may be very big in the movie scene but it's also relatively popular in the video game scene there were a myriad of harry potter games to come out in succession with the movies and uh it's very easy to walk into a pawn shop or a thrift store these days and come across uh, a Harry Potter game. Now, I'm not sure what that says about them. Are they bad games? I don't know. Uh, honestly, I haven't played them. In our travels, we've been able to come across a whole bunch of them here. Uh, one, and in the GameCube series, during the GameCube era, was like the first half of the movies. So we have uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And if you happen to see this one, pick this one up. Uh, I don't know what it's going for these days, but, you, you know, these Harry Potter games you're usually going to find for a buck, 50 cents even sometimes. This one uh, tends to hold its value for whatever reason, maybe because it's the first. Although technically it's not. Uh, from what I understand, the very first Harry Potter game to come out, at least for the GameCube and PlayStation 2 era, was the second installment, The Chamber of Secrets. And then for whatever reason, the first installment came out after. Uh, I don't know what's exciting about these. They look like they may be, uh, you know, just typical um, third-person platformers. Uh, I hear there's the combat kind of works like uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, I always, f the, I think this is the last one we picked up. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, you know, it looks like you can fly on, um, looks like it's a, a, almost kind of open world in that you can fly around on the, uh, what were those eagle, winged eagle, slash bear things they call them buckbeak here but i know that's just a name that you can you know there's kind of activity to the game boy advance 
I don't know what, what that would entail. Uh, you've got Goblet of Fire here. This is the fourth installment. This is where this, the series kind of started to get a little darker. And the cool thing about this one is this appears to be the only one of these Harry Potter games that's uh, one through three players. And I thought that was fascinating. I remember uh, picking this one up mainly because uh, I think that would be neat to play a, play a three-player Harry Potter game. I've, I'm assuming you could probably combine spells, you know. Anytime I see a three-player game, those are fun to pick up. And then I think this is probably the one most exciting uh, just by, by uh, you know, by the cover is the, the Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. And I, I don't know how polished this is. I, I do know I played a little bit of this. And it was okay, but it's two-player. And it makes me wonder how, how balanced of a game this is as a, as a kind of a head-to-head -head sports game. I've always wondered about that. Um, and again, connect to Game Boy Advance for Quidditch training, Quidditch card training and cooperative gameplay. Uh, all these kind of had that connectivity thing going, or at least most of them. And uh, you never know what kind of weird content comes with, with that. Um, basically what that is is with the GameCube, you could take you could play the, the GameCube game, and then you had a separate cable that connected to a Game Boy. And if you had the Game Boy game of the same name, uh, you could do you could unlock stuff, maybe an extra character or additional content. I don't know. It was always weird. Um, very mysterious. Um, but we're not playing any of those, okay? We're not playing any of those today. We're actually playing uh, the one game, Harry Potter game, that I have played. And uh, was shocked to find that it's a lot of fun. And I want to show it to you today uh, here outside of Hogwarts. Uh, we're going to be going in to Hogwarts and spending the voyage just exploring the castle and maybe the grounds outside. Maybe we'll see some familiar faces, but my 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 main concern here is to show you uh, what a, a grand job has been done on Harry Potter, the Sorcerer's Stone, for the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color. It was made by Electronic Arts. It's got a battery backup. And as opposed to these, which all seem to be either uh, action-related or uh, 3D platformers. The game we'll be playing today is is a, a very traditional 8-bit role-playing game, turn-based role-playing game. And um, if you haven't read the books, if you don't want to listen to the audio, if you are a hardcore gamer and want to learn the origins of Harry Potter, this is probably the best way to do it from a gaming perspective, okay? I really think they did their homework here. I think the game is serviceable. Uh, I have had some problems with it, and I will uh, get into that later. But for the most part, this is a game that's gonna cost you nearly nothing. I think I found it in a pawn shop for like three bucks, or a thrift store for like three bucks. Popped it in, and it really grabbed me right away. And again, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan. Uh, so we're going to check that out real soon. Okay, we've also got the bin here. Uh, really excited about what, what's going on there. We're going to get to that. And then, of course, we have your questions and uh, queries and, and all that. Sitting in the bag that tells no tales, where you get to man the wheel and tell me what's up. The old capping. All right? Now I want to do one more quick story here before we get started. I could go on and on in this monologue. Harry Potter has been a big part of my life, not because I'm a big fan, uh, but because my family is uh, a big fan. And uh, I went down to Orlando with uh, my family, where they have at the Universal Studios an actual recreation of Hogwarts and the surrounding town uh, of called Hogsmeade. You can get a butter beer there. You can get you know your own personalized wand. Uh, there's, you know, roller coaster there called du Dueling Dragons, I believe. Um, everywhere around you, there's cobblestone and gargoyles 
and uh, people in, in, in robes and, uh, you know, neckties. Very well done. Uh, there were some crazy restrictions, and maybe I'll get into those as we play. Uh, but I do want to tell you one, one story. At the end of our travels uh, that vacation, we were all having our, our, our final dinner, and um, my mom decided to buy some some souvenirs for everybody. Why you'd buy souvenirs for the people who were on the trip with you, I don't know. But, you know, her heart was in the right place. And uh, she got to me and she says, And you, you're not going to believe believe it, Captain Revs. But I got you what you've been waiting for forever so long. And I said, Oh, yeah? What is it? She gave me this bag here. I could clearly tell she got this from the Harry Potter area of the theme park. You see those those boys there? And Hermione. And she says, well, you're not going to believe it, but I got you your very own parrot. And I'm like, uh, my own parrot? What? Seriously? She's like, yeah, here he is. Do you like him? And I looked at him. And he looked okay, but then I realized, hold on a second, and my sister starts to laugh, and maybe none of you get this, so I'll be happy to bring her to the punchline. I said, Ma, that's not a parrot. Uh, that's the phoenix from the end of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, if I bring this onto the ship, there's a good chance it might explode at any moment and take the whole ship with it. I'm not sure that's a good idea. So anyway, he's going to sit outside the deck. Uh, I actually have a, a flame retardant box uh, ready to go for him. We're going to put him back away. And then we're going to get started with the game. All right, how's that sound? Let me, let me talk this out. Guys, seal that up for you, will you? All right. You know, Mom's heart's in the right place. Okay, let's get started. It's Harry Potter. And the Sorcerer's Stone, if you don't know, that's the very first book, the very first chapter, the origin of Harry Potter. Let's get started. Oh, and this is for, again, the Game Boy Color. All right, give you a little, little leap bit audio there. All right, here we go. Here's some visuals. Okay, so... Oh my god, I am sweaty. I don't know if it's uh. Oof. There we go. I don't know if it's just natural heat that the the wood generates, or that f being the close proximity to that phoenix. But I am boiling. Loving this music though. Okay, so here we are. We're actually sitting in uh, the bowels of Hogwarts. And if you don't know what Hogwarts is. That's where Harry Potter goes to school and learns how to be a wizard. And you see he's got a little wand in his hand. Can you see that? And he's got his glasses. Not bad detail for 8-bit. What are these little blobs all around? Well, this is a game that plays a lot like uh, Secret of Mana or Earthbound uh, in that you can actually see where the enemies are before they engage you in a turn-based battle. Now, let's just get dirt down and dirty right out of the box. Let's show you what the combat's like. We got a couple of snakes here, and you got some options. You got spells. You got cards. Item and flea. Now let's just blow these guys away with a little flipendo tria. Did I say that right? Flipendo tria! Alright, no problem. So really, this couldn't be more Final Fantasy. Look, we got experience. Sickles is your currency. You know, a little loot on the side. And uh, we actually find ourselves in Professor Snape's bedroom. Why? Well, uh, here's the thing. I'm kind of stuck in this game, I'm going to be honest. You know, if I'm going to recommend this game, I want to recommend it with all the glitches that have come with it. And I'm actually supposed to be able to grab some sort of item, some sort of ingredient off of this painting. 
and I, I have not been able to do so. How do I know this? Well, I was so desperate getting re ready for this, this voyage that I actually had to look it up, something I do not do very often. Usually if I get stuck in a game, I either push through it or I just put the game down and go on to another game. Maybe come back to it in a year or two. Uh, but obviously we have a show, we have a deadline to deal with, so I had to try and figure this thing out, and apparently I think I'm just glitched. I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to find the final ingredient to give to Professor Snape to make a potion. Now if you're a fan of the book, I'll tell you exactly where in the book we are. This is the first uh, potion class that Professor that you, that you attend, Harry's first class ever I believe. And uh, Snape is up here. If you don't remember who Professor Snape is, he played uh, he played the sheriff from Nottingham in, in the uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves with Kevin Costner. You know, Morgan Freeman and Brian Adams did the music. Yeah, that guy. Uh, he's been in 10 million other things, but that's all. I, that's what I remember was him as. So anyway, he wanted me to gather some ingredients for uh, this guy, I believe, Neville. Another, another classic character from the book who burns himself making a potion. So this is all stuff that actually happens in the book. So this game is very, has been very good as far as I can see in hitting all the points. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm maybe four hours into the game. We've, uh, we visit Di Diagon Alley, which is kind of like uh, the mall for wizards. Uh, we sailed the boat from Diagon Alley to Hogwarts here. We're down in the dungeon. This is, uh, it's said that, that uh, Professor Snape's class is in the dungeon where he, uh, he teaches how to mix potions. And if we go up a floor, we find ourselves in the main hall. And you may remember in the movie, you may remember in the books, ascending this, this tall staircase into the rest of the castle. The, the castle is very well detailed for a Game Boy Color game. Uh, as far as I can see, every floor uh, ever was here. I don't remember these gargoyles. You guys might remember that if you're a fan of the, the books. It's been some time for me. Uh, but every, they're very good about the little uh, details. And right here is actually where you can see where the four schools in Harry Potter are leading. Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. They're all in competition from one another uh, each semester. And this this basically shows you how everybody's doing. Now, it looks like Gryffindor on the left is, is winning with a 72. Then I believe Hufflepuff is next with a 61. What kind of animal is Hufflepuff? Is that a, a cat, maybe? Badger? Maybe a badger. Uh... Ravenclaw is in last place, and it looks like Slytherin is in second. So, uh, as you play this RPG, much like in the book, Harry is and, and, and Team Gryffindor are constantly losing and gaining points. Now, there are rooms everywhere in this castle, and any unmanned rooms like the, the, the banquet hall here, that again you may remember from the movie, uh, actually has some, uh, some monsters in here. Much like in the, in the movie, I remember, didn't, didn't Harry Potter walk into a, a room and there was a cyclops, a bathroom? The, the monsters occupy, you know, these, the castle, just like the students and the teachers. Obviously, most of them are pretty easy to dispatch. And uh, like any RPG, as long as you grind a little bit, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, decimate anything that you come across pretty fairly easily. Uh, there's obviously an economy system. You can buy items. Let's see some of the fun items. Again, fans of the book will really enjoy this. Uh, the Wig and Well Potion, I believe that's uh, healing in this game. Uh, the pepper up potion, collapsible cauldron for the alchemist on the go. I've never used that. Got some school books here. I'm not even sure what some of this stuff is. You got your wand, some components here. Uh, and uh, one of the coolest things 
are the wizard cards. Do you remember in Harry Potter? Uh, you could buy in the in the book. He buys a candy called a chocolate frog. It's basically a frog, and a lump of chocolate that's been molded into a frog. But in addition to getting the, the chocolate frog, you actually get a, uh, a a wizard card. And these wizard cards can be used all over, can, can be found all over uh, Hogwarts, in cubby holes, on uh, statues, and all the ones that are blinking are the ones I found recently. But the beautiful thing about these, if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's really fun to look at all these wizard cards because you remember hearing about them in the books. Here you actually get to read them. So like this one here. Paracelius, greatest of all medieval alchemists. And you'll see you'll notice there's a whole number of alchemist cards. Now it looks like we've found nine out of ten of them. And we even had some doubles here, like uh Alandro Alandora Kettleridge discovered the use of gillyweed when she stuck her head into a bucket of water. So, you know, uh, these are really fun, really makes the game interesting, and as for what they're used for, you can actually find card combinations, and if you're, willing, if you're able to find the three uh, cards, you're good to go. And you can make... You can do that spell, Conjure Snack, you're good to go. And Snitch Streak, whatever that is. I don't know what these are. I think Snitch Streak has to do with uh, Quidditch, the uh, the um, Harry Potter broom football game. So look at all, you know, all these different spells that can be used once you find the right collection of cards. And I believe uh, this being a Game Boy Color game, there was an element where you could, uh, this also being during the Pokemon era, where every game had to be tradable. Um, you could, you could also trade, uh, cards between friends. Alright, it looks like we're actually kind of done for now. McGonagall's office is on this floor. You don't want to be late for her class. Again, another character from, a uh, famous character from the books. Everybody's using the right parlance. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. We're, uh, we're going to take a little break here. And, um, yeah, let me, uh, let me get the harp here. Hold on. I'm getting lost in that music. <laughs> it's very, it's like right up in my, my ears, man. Jeez, okay. Have we seen a lot? No, no, no. We haven't seen, we've seen barely anything. But I think that's what's very fascinating about uh, Harry Potter for the Game Boy Color. They packed a lot in there. They packed a lot in there. Uh, it sucks that we seem to be stuck. There's still a lot to see if you haven't seen. Well, um, but there's, there's, there's neat things to see in the castle. We'll continue to explore. It's a shame that the game has glitched. I don't know that I'll be able to continue on with my personal campaign. Uh, that doesn't mean that I can't rec recommend the game because it is quite cheap um, and it saves your progress at any time. Very handy for a, a handheld game. And uh, it's the Harry Potter story, so, you know, it's not like you're, you're you know, it's a it's boring slog. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I suggest it. Okay, let's get into this booty segment here. We got one deal here, uh, just a, a good deal. And then we got another mystery, okay? We'll get into that soon. Let's talk about this deal. Uh, this was just your your straight up pawn shop. Guy loves me. Happened to be on the right day. Had a nice little mix here of stuff. Uh, let's check it out. Do I have a receipt? No, but I do remember how much I paid for this stuff. So we'll take a look. All right, first thing, he had some Genesis games. Sonic 3 boxed pretty decent no instruction manual i believe everything that we got in here was a dollar okay maybe a couple exceptions here uh but i believe everything here was a dollar each miss pac-man 
for the Sega Genesis. Also missing the manual. But a nice clean copy. It's Miss Pac-Man. How can you say no? And it says 36 wild and crazy mazes for more fun than ever. Now that makes me think that they have additional content here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the mazes they have on the back here. And uh, this is this is more content than you would find in the arcade. And Tengen was usually pretty good about that when they ported over stuff. Uh, Gauntlet for the NES is a very fine example of Tengen just uh, blowing the doors off in the way of content. All right. Sonic the Hedgehog, the original, not for resale. Does that mean it's rare? Some people have this, get like you know very excited when they see not for resale. There are certain titles out there in the video game industry. Uh, Majora's Mask, um, Turtles, Turtles in Time, I believe. Uh, a few games out there that if you happen to find a not for resale copy, you found gold. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is not one of them. This says not for resale because. Every copy of this came with a, a, a Sega Genesis. That was what it was not for resale. All right. It was meant to be packed in with the system original. All right, what do we got? We got a PS2 game here. Clean copy of uh, Capsule Monsters Coliseum. Uh, if you've got the time, if you have a friend or two who's actually open to this, I have a feeling these are great games. They look like they're heavily strategic very deep i've never really played them uh but the art design and the fact that they are kind of uh, i mean look at he's playing with little pieces do you see the pieces down here little bronze pieces uh, that's the kind of stuff that i just can't say no to any kind of video board game uh, it's very hard for me to, 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 to pass up at least for a dollar uh what do we got here nfl street for the gamecube you would be shocked by how much these games go for on the GameCube. Uh, they're very... Um, a lot of people really like these games because they're arcadey. They have a real touch of nostalgia to them. If you have any doubts about that, you can see right there on the cover, right up here. Oh my God, is that William the Refrigerator Perry? It is. That's the kind of uh, attitude that this kind of game, this game has. And the fact that it's on the GameCube... Uh, you, generally, that's the pedigree of uh, hardware when you're talking Xbox, original Xbox, PS2, GameCube. Uh, Xbox and GameCube, it's, it's, it's sometimes a matter of opinion, but I tend to go toward GameCube mainly because uh, they load, the games load faster um, on the GameCube for the most part. So, and NFL Street, it's, it's not like you need uh, the kind of, you know, hardware that, that a game like maybe say Grand Theft Auto would need uh, so as a result these you know people want these they especially want the sequels NFL Street 2 and uh, NBA Street 2 uh, so yeah these these are worth uh, worth a little bit certainly worth more than a dollar and they're fun games we got a Wii game here Far Cry Vengeance is that the first one? I don't know. This, this, the first Far Cry game has a couple different names, so I, I never really know which one is which. That's pretty fun, though. It's all right. Okay. Shoot, claw, slash, grenade. That's a that's a collection of good name, good words, right? Hit and run. Very hard to pass this up for a dollar. Simpsons Grand Theft Auto. This is like the ultimate gift. Pretty much give this to anyone and you'll make their day. Oh, here we go. NBA Street 2. Not, not nearly as valuable as NFL Street 2. But on the GameCube, uh, in, in demand, certainly. This is a really decent uh, fighting game. The second one, Grand Adventure, is way cool. And... Uh, is uh, is worth a little bit. This was just too hard to pass up for the GameCube for a buck. I think we may have Grand Adventure for GameCube, but I, I wasn't going to pass this one up. One Piece is, in, and you know, Battle to Be the King of Pirates. This is a, about a game about piracy, so there you go. Couldn't pass that up. And then one one other thing. 
What do we got? What's this? Oh, wow. How about that? We got a couple of Game Boy Advance games here. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, I actually think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop this right in here. And keep the two together forever. Because they connect to one another. It says, extend your adventure. Connect to Nintendo Game Boy Advance Harry Potter game. So we'll pop that right in there. And they're together. Maybe one day we'll give it a shot. And this, who in their right mind put the sticker on the label? What a pain in the ass. But when I looked it over, this was the game I was the most excited in the lot to pick up. Oh, no, not this one. This is uh, Scooby-Doo. Scooby, I can't even, it's Scooby-Doo. I don't even know what the second name is. Who put that sticker on there? It makes me sick. And a couple other things. We got a black GameCube memory card. I believe he just threw that in. Real nice guy. And then another one with a big stupid label on there. But if you look closely, is that a pirate ship? I believe that is a pirate ship. And this game is actually called Peter Pan. Escape from Neverland? I believe that was a, a like a sequel to Peter Pan. Uh, the original cartoon uh, motion picture. Uh, but the fact that it's a Peter Pan game. You don't see those a lot. You especially don't see them in 16-bit form. So I'm really excited to try this. I don't know how, how good it is. It's got $4 all over it, so it's certainly not an uncommon game. But it might be a pretty decent platform. It looks like it's made by Disney Interactive. All that stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I believe out the door he gave us all that for ten seventy five. Ten seventy five. Uh, that's that's the that's the story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, it's certainly not more than fifteen. I know that for a fact. So I think that was a pretty good deal. Okay. We're, we're, we're certainly behind on time. Oh, we got some time. We got some time for this. But I, I couldn't resist not bringing this or grabbing this. I think we've reached a new low in our, uh, our uh, you know, in, in our adventures in, in grabbing a lot for little. Uh, me and Bismuth went out... Uh, and we were, you know, just shopping around and getting some food. And we happened to find just this morning, before we made our way to Hogwarts, this. This was sitting outside of a video game store. Let me get it for you. This is sitting right outside of a, a, a used DVD video game kind of place. And it's a big Tupperware bin sitting right outside the, the front door of the business. And in the bottom, there appears to be a whole bunch of discs. Now, I don't know what they are. I'm willing to bet that these are probably DVDs or CDs. I'd be shocked if there's any games in here. But there's a whole bunch of them in here. And I think what happened was they brought in this whole Tupperware bin. And they probably had a whole bunch of DVDs in here or CDs. And... Um, the store took all the ones that were in cases and said no to the ones that were loose. Well, we're more desperate than that, aren't we? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what we got here. Let me get a, let me get a chair here. All right, that's good. Okay. So we got. All right, grabbing just a whole whole handful here oh geez it smells kind of kind of mildewy uh okay just gonna blow through these we've got if if you recognize these feel free to to shout or uh, bang on the bang on the whole wall there uh cd called savages probably a, a band i would guess this looks like a movie devil's not I don't even know what that is. Can you recognize that? No idea. 
Hairspray, maybe the movie. Mature. I like that they put the rating on there. The Forger. Is that John Travolta? Yeah, he's looking very intense. He's had a hard day. Getting played. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Getting played. I feel like I'm getting played right now. Bur Burns Quest. Burns Q. Oh. Burns Quay Barbecue. The Expendables. They misspelled the Expendables. That's okay. Would these work in my DVD, I wonder? The Kingdom? The Kingdom? This, they say they're DVD-R. So maybe someone doing a little piracy here. The Lady Killers. I actually uh, kind of wanted to see this. I might watch that. Whoops. Maybe not. Wall Street. I hope that's the 80s one with uh, Michael Douglas. Great movie. Charlie Sheen, Michael Douglas. Oh, man, old school. Look at this. It's Will Ferrell streaking down the road. That's perfect. That's that's a very good. Uh... <laughs> that's good. This one is totally. Oh wait, it says. It says uh. One big hip hop compilation. Okay. Much hip hop, I guess. Little little Wagner is that Little Wayne? I think that's Little Wayne. Yep, yeah, Little Wayne. Corn. That's from my era. Creed, gross. Let's get that out of there. Nickelback, no, they were just in town. What's this? Ubistank. Ubistank, I haven't heard them in a while. Wow, that takes me back. Lincoln Park, it's a pass. Booster, I don't know what that is. Sinister, okay. Right. Christmas in Compton? Oh man, that sounds great. I wonder what that's like. Uh, Drill Bit Taylor, how, who is this? Drill, Drill Bit Taylor. It's a movie. Oh, we've got to be so heavy. All right, we got a couple more minutes. We actually got some cases here. This one looks like you got it from a flea market. Uh, Girls Against Boys. Looks like a, a girl power kind of movie here. After a series of bad experiences with men, she teams up with her co-worker Lou, who has a simple, deadly way of dealing with the opposite sex. Oh my god. We're going to have to preempt the voyage. I'm, I'm already taking a pick. Uh, Meth Ghost Ray. It's a DVR. Muir's. Not sure what the compilation disc. Okay. Blitz. This looks like this is still in here. Yeah, it's in its sleeve. Blitz. Hey, does somebody want to... Uh, does somebody want to throw a, a bottle of Robitussin into the kettle for me? Kettle for me? Am I the only one here in the barking? Now that I brought it up, everyone's going to hear it. Uh, SpongeBob the movie. Whatever. Bolt. That's that uh, Walt Disney movie about the terrier. Fire with fire. Okay. Uh, this looks dead. Can you understand why they didn't take this at the used store? But how was this? I was like, you're just going to leave it there. Come on. Recovery. These guys look like they're, they look like they're ready to sing. They're ready to put a show on for you. All right. Uh, Limp Bizkit. Limp Biscuit, chocolate starfish, and the hot fl hot dog flavored water. That sounds lovely. Is the disc in there? Of course it's not. It's it's Evan's dance. All right, but we have that clever CD case. All right, what else? Looks like a kids movie, Freedom Force. Pace one one. Whatever that is. Blimpy Knuckles. You're not falling asleep, are you? El Gringo. Seven Dust. Uh, what's this one? The Green DVD by Non 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 Piaxin. 
I don't know what the, I don't even know how to say that. The best of fuel. Only the best here in the galleon. Tim McGraw. Let's get rid of that. Method Man. That's pretty cool. Rascal Flats. Another Freedom Force. Was this a series? No, I think it's just two copies of the same darn movie. Another Pace One. Oh, wait, did I? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, re I read most of those already. Okay, here we go. Last handful. We've got a, a, a picture. Puppy Pals. Let's make sure we get that up on the quarters. On the back wall. Death Race 2? Really? Cool. I love Death Race. Kenny Chesney. Uh, this one just has uh, a couple of red eyes and a smile. <laughs> E40, Loyalty and Betrayal. Another Nickelback uh, uh, one here. More Nickelback. Oh, boy. 21. There we go. The Three Stooges. Stooged and Confused. Sweet. Little Three Stooges in my day. Uh, I don't know what this is. Buck Cherry. Buck Cherry. This is the one I didn't know what it is. If you, if you think you know, feel free to ding me on that. Uh, Papa Roach. They're okay. I like that picture. The backup plan. That's a pass. Blitz. Which Blitz? Oh, Blitz not NFL Blitz. Grandma's Boy. That was a good movie. Spider-Man. Nickelodeon Barnyard. What? Hey, look. I've, ne I've never seen this. Is this the movie? Oh, man. You have no idea how many times I tried to find this movie at a thrift store. And I'll find the case. And I'll open the case and the disc isn't there. I wonder if this... Oh, man. I'm going to watch this. See? It was worth it. Right there. Just for that one. And all the nickel back. Okay. And then the rest of it... Looks like there's an old red box case here. Somebody didn't return their movie. Meanwhile, the Twilight Sentinels. Uh, Mr. Woodcock. Zombieland. Zombieland's a good one. And then in this blank case here, Soul Man. Wow, really? Is that with uh, the old 80s movie? Or is that Soul Man? And then uh, probably the most valuable thing in here is one of those uh, six-way outlets. This actually might come in handy. So, uh, What did we pay for that? 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 Uh, free. It was free. We're garbage pickers. It's, it was sitting outside of a store, and I just did not have the personal standards uh, to leave it behind. Um, and I'm going to watch Barnyard, and uh, I might keep the outlet thing, and this actually might come in handy. Uh, the rest is all... Probably, uh, I don't know, kindling. Okay, that's it. Let's get back to Harry Potter. There's CDs all over the place now. Uh, how many Nickelback CDs were in there? Just drop something? They haunt it around here. All right. Uh, it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for the Game Boy Color. Don't underestimate it. All right, let's get back. Are they multiplying? What's that guy doing behind me? He wasn't there 10 minutes ago, was he? Is he just creeping around? What's up with that? Where are my headphones? Alright. It's a, you know, it's a nice, nice easy day here at Hogwarts. We really don't have anywhere to be. Sometimes I'm really up against the clock some of these voyages so it's nice to be able to hang back like the British do and uh, just live life give me that controller live life and not let it pass me by let's just take a look at some of the uh, we'll just explore the castle a little bit um, we're on the second floor as you remember we came in 
uh, through these big steps you remember for the movie. And just to give you an idea of what's outside the castle, we'll take a little walk out there. And you can actually walk the grounds. And just like in the in the books, there's all your favorite landmarks here. We got the greenhouse where uh, Professor Sprout teaches her class. And then Hagrid is that uh, big hairy guy uh, that helps out, uh, he says, Hermione. Oh, Hermione. I have a terrible accent, but that doesn't matter because uh, every so often I still get people walking into the mess hall calling me Hagrid. So <laughs> there you go. But yeah, here's Hagrid's uh, hut. Oh, here he is. What brings you out here during class, Harry? Professor Snape's... Oh, really? Professor Snape sent me to look for potion ingredients. Beetle's eyes, boom slang skin, and snake fangs. Sometimes you can find such loose around the school grounds. They're, they're kind of giving him an accent. As for boom slang skin, which is the one thing I'm looking for, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if Snape had some in his office. He's so fine of serpents and alike. What about the fangs? Uh, Professor Sprouts at the greenhouse was having trouble driving off some snakes. Uh, maybe their fangs have been left behind. Thank you, Hagrid. You're welcome. Uh, I'd help you, but I've been busy spraying beetles out back, and I need a nap. Okay, so he's out. I think this is a, a good... Yes, I know, you're spraying beetles back here. This is a good development, guys, because I was stuck on that one ingredient. Man, this this music, is this killing anybody? <laughs> is it just too loud? Let me just... If I could just kill, the, kill a little bit of the... Oh my god. There we go. Thank you. Oh, jeez. Music was cutting through me. Cutting through me like tissue paper. Alright, now I want to check and see if we have beetle eyes. Okay, so we have beetle eyes. And we have a whole bunch of snake fangs. We only need two beetle eyes and one snake fang. Now, the fact that Hagrid has come back out here and re, um, I'm going to take a little walk around while we talk, because I want to show you another landmark out here. This is Hagrid's house. The fact that he has come back out here and rebriefed me leads me to believe that maybe the game has realized that, uh, it's made a mistake, and maybe it's reset itself so that... I will be able to go and get uh, the... I forgot what it's even called now. Some sort of skin. But I want you guys to check this out. If it, uh, through the, you know, there's all kinds of uh, paths here and, and stuff. Not much, but uh, right over here is uh, the actual uh, Quidditch arena. So that's a neat touch. Now, I don't know if you get to play Quidditch in this. I think you probably do, because that was a big part of the book in the first book. How it plays here, I don't know. I do know that this game contains eight mini games, seven of which I have not found. I found one mini game so far, and it was basically memory uh, with with uh, those wizard cards. But uh, they were all mini games that could be accessed at the main menu. So even when you finish the RPG, you'll still have some on-the-go arcadey fun to play on this little cart. And you have to play through the adventure to find those games and unlock them. Alright, now I want to go back down to the dungeon. Guys, fingers crossed, because if we could get this uh, quest done, that would be really neat for me. Then I could continue to play the game. I'm not dying to play it uh, anymore, but I have enjoyed my time with it. So let's see. It's supposed to be on this sign. I know that for a fact. I know it's not, not looting monsters. Uh, what a drag. That's too bad. All right, well, let's sh let me show you a little bit more of the, the castle. We'll go uh, and take the steps. And there are doors everywhere on all the floors. I have not been in nearly 
not, not nearly all of them. Uh, mainly because most of them have monsters in them. And they're pretty much uh, places uh, to grind. To grind up your level. I think I'm like level 20. So you do get up there and level in this game. And there are even secret passageways. Like this one right over here. If we talk to this guy, he kind of spills the beans. One of those griffin statues is supposed, supposedly leads to another hallway somehow. So obviously we're going to want to look up his butt. And now we're crawling up it. Okay. If you want to be really gross, let's let's slide down his butt. Okay. All right. That was disgusting. Thank you. We get another ride here. All right. Thank you. I do like the sound. <laughs> I do like the exciting sound effects with that. Uh, these statues. You may know. You may know what this means. I don't. I have no idea. Uh, is there a way up? Because I kind of want to show you guys. Oh, this is down. I don't want to go down. Oh, I, I will go down here because I want to show you guys. Uh... I bet I'm way off now. Yeah, no. So if you get hurt, you can come here to the the hospital and get your health back. So it's very easy to, to grind around the castle. Explore. And uh, it's not a pain. This is not an unbalanced game. And uh, yeah, obviously there's items that you can use on the go and gather. All these cabinets usually contain something of interest. And if we continue all the way up, we'll see another character that, that most of you who uh, appreciate the show uh, might get, or the, the, the books might get a kick out of seeing. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, le the level of detail that they've put into the story development and character development. Uh, I believe this is like the Egyptian floor. I, I don't know much about this. Can I go up any higher? I don't know that I remember where this guy is. Because there are a lot of twists and turns in this uh, this castle, much like Hogwarts itself. And I think if we go right over here, we may run into who I'm thinking of. Is he gone? He may be gone. I don't remember. Anyone remember what this big uh, crystal ball was for? I don't know. And I'll show you where Gryffindor's uh, headquarters is. This is where Gryffindor's headquarters is, but you can't go in because the fat lady isn't there. I know this is all stuff that may be going way over your head if you haven't read the book. Uh, I apologize for that, but I want to make it clear you don't need to read any, of the, any part of Harry Potter to enjoy this RPG. Okay, I would stack this up against uh, any other middle ground 8-bit RPG that you can find in the Game Boy Color. Uh, I wouldn't put it over, say, Grand Dragon Warrior 3, but, you know, even something like Lufia, um, or maybe even Harvest Moon, I would, uh, I would, I would par it up with those. All right, well, I think that's about it. I know there wasn't a lot of action here, but we're actually running out of time. Uh, we had too many Nickelback CDs to go through. <laughs> Uh, is there more to see in Harry Potter? I'm sure there is. But that's an adventure for you to take on with Harry on your own time on another day. As for us, we're wrapping up the voyage. We're wrapping up the adventure here at Hogwarts. Uh, the movies, it's kind of daunting to get into the movies because, man, there's like eight of them. Uh, that's a big time investment, I understand. Uh, the audiobook's probably the best starting off point. But if you got a nice uh, a nice Game Boy Advance SP, drop another 5 10 bucks. I'd be shocked if you had to pay $10 for this game. Uh, and grab it. Because uh, it's really cool. It's, re it's, it's uh, one of the best RPGs I've ever played on Game Boy Color. And uh, for a game that I just blindly picked up at a thrift store... For a few bucks that was totally that was a, a very welcome surprise okay let's check the mailbox here a mailbag here okay this comes from zenzio 9985 and he says cool 
Do you have a lot of mint condition games, sir? Uh, mint condition. Maybe some. I don't know about a lot. Uh, this kind of question makes me kind of leads me to believe that he he wants to know. You know, does it does it? Uh, am I concerned about condition when I pick up a game? No. Honestly, for the most part, no. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy who will pass on a game that I want because the manual is missing, or even when the if the box, the case is missing. Uh, I have a huge um, CD book for games that have no home, no casing, and I pop them in there. Uh, cartridges. I prefer loose cartridges to cartridges in cardboard boxes. Now, does that mean I'm going to pass on uh, a box NES game for four dollars? Absolutely not. Uh, but I'm not actively looking to complete uh, have a complete boxed NES set. That is crazy to me. Just to have the games is enough for me. Uh, I'm okay with. I, I'd like to have the manuals. That would be nice. Uh, but I'm also quite happy to look online and use the the manuals you find out there uh, scanned in. If that means I find the game for a good price. For me, price is usually uh, Trump's condition. And that's, uh, I think that's because for the most part, I want to keep this stuff. I want to play this stuff. I'm not looking to flip it all one day. Uh, so condition, you know, I, I feel like a sticker here and there on a, on a game actually adds a little character to it. Um, I was the kind of kid who would take my remote control card and put like you know all kinds of paint on it like just awful pink and orange paint and stickers and just wrap the thing up just because i i thought that that made it look more unique so yeah uh mint games sure we have some but only because they've kind of come to us in that in that way not because we have waited for the day to get the mint uh the only exception i want to say i want to say i usually hold out for the case for turbo graphics games but even then if it's the right price and it's a loose game i'm going to grab it so i'd rather have uh you know rather have the games than uh a nice clean looking cart so that's the gamer in me okay let's leave it there um thanks for joining us here uh, at hogwarts uh feel free to um, pick up harry potter and the game boy uh for the game boy color it's a great game I feel like this thing used to light up. It's been a long time. Uh, we'll see you next week. Not sure where, not sure when, but I know one thing's for sure. Wherever we go, we're going to go there together. All right? I want to thank each and every one of you crewmen, supporters, and, Imagineer and Imagineers. Until next time. But well and adieu. To ye Spanish maidens, farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to head out to Hogwarts. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Keep your powder dry, man.